I swear to God, these players somehow, somehow find ways to make you despise them that little bit more. Today, Manchester United humiliated, mauled, ripped apart and destroyed 4-0 by Brighton at the Amex Stadium. And it could have been 5-6-7 and it wouldn't have flattered Brighton. It was an abomination of a performance today from the same starting eleven that beat Brentford 3-0 on Monday. You can come at me and say, Ralph Radnick, Sam, what a crap manager. I'd say, shut the hell up. I would say Ralph Radnick is the single best thing that has happened to this club post-Fergie. The spotlight that he's putting on the right, everybody, every player, every board member, everybody above him at the club, he's put firm spotlight on it and, and sort of force change. If you want to focus on the short term, you can do that. But I'm, I'll talk about Ralph Randick later in the match reaction, but the humiliation against Liverpool at Old Trafford, the humiliation against City at Old Trafford, the humiliation away at Watford, the humiliation away at Liverpool, the humiliation... Do you want me to go on? The humiliation there against Brighton, who have what? They've scored like 16 goals all season at home in the Premier League and they're going to score four and absolutely destroy us today. That man there, we all know his job is incredible. Incredibly hard. Sorry, not incredible. My word, it just gets worse and worse and worse. Andy Cole summed it up here. What else can you say there? What else can you say when you've watched that Manchester United performance apart from, wow, has that really, really just happened? I was supposed to be going to the game. Something came up today, so I couldn't go. Thank fuck for that coming up. My word, that must have been an abysmal away in. So many people putting their money up and the players putting in that level of performance. I'm not sitting here pointing the finger at Ronaldo. He hardly had the ball in that first half. Wow. In the second half, Wow. Jesus Christ, Caicedo and Basuma in midfield dominating us. McTominay, pff, geez, he looked absolutely horrendous today. All he was doing was fouling and not passing. Matic taken off at halftime. Ilanga absolutely dominated by Cucurella, who probably rightly got man of the match. But I don't know where to turn. I, 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 I keep thinking these United players have found the bottom of the barrel. They can't possibly go any lower than that, can they? And they go and do that. Against Brighton away, a Brighton team who has struggled, who's been very good away from home, beat Arsenal and Spurs, I believe, this season, but have struggled at home. Tore us to shreds there, first to every second ball, intense, all the fucking basics that I've been speaking about, we've been speaking about, game after game after game after game. And the basics just aren't there, the attitude just isn't there. <sighs> Man, I'm looking forward to seeing the apologies on social media after that game from everybody. Let's see what goes down after that because there's nothing that they can say. 99% of that squad, seriously, I do not give a fuck if they never play for Manchester United ever, ever again. I swear at this point, it almost feels like these players are actively trying to sabotage their relationship with fans. Like they want us to despise them because it's not just losing games. It's just like down in tools. The bags are packed for Ibiza. They were packed for Ibiza before we played Leicester a few weeks ago when we were banging for a top four race. They checked out completely and utterly. And as I said, that is the exact same starting 11 that played Brighton. Well, yeah, starting 11 that played Brighton five days ago and comfortably had a 3-0 win and we cruised to it. So what was different between that game and this game? It's all up there. We've got the early goal against uh, Brentford. The players were G'd up for it. There we go. Let's start actually playing football that we get fucking paid thousands of pounds. And I never really, I never really speak about that. But what you're seeing now, any other job, geez, you're getting slapped. You're getting kicked out the door. Maybe not slapped. Probably not slapped. But you're definitely getting kicked out the door and you're getting fired. These players are absolutely stealing a living. And as I said there, right, I've, I've seen this reaction and I'm pretty angry about it, if I'm being completely and utterly honest. Sam Pilger there saying that Manchester United's decision to appoint Ralph Ragnick has been an absolute disaster. And I'm just like, it makes me want to bang my head against the brick wall. If really, if... Have Manchester United appointed Antonio Conte and we got top four this year, you really fucking think our club would be in a better position for it? We'd have Champions League football next year. Great. You think our club would be in a better position for it? Or would that be the beginning of another two, three year cycle where you have a little bit of a false dawn and then shit all happens and United are left high and dry with a squad that's mismatched? Sam Pilger, I would expect better from you to be able to see the long term, but maybe that's the problem. 
No one can really see the long term. Ralph Brandick was never brought in as a manager, first and foremost. He was brought in to help steer the vision of the club after what what we hoped was going to be a good end to the season. We were in for a top four race. We were in the Champions League. We had Ronaldo. We had Pogba coming back from injury. You can piss off, Pogba. And then what happened? The, the season's been abysmal. From the, probably from the, from, from the level of expectation that we've had going into the season to what's happened, it's probably the worst season we've had in the Premier League. I mean, statistically, it actually is the worst season we've had in the Premier League. Not even Cristiano Ronaldo could save that today. Cut a frustrated figure. Hardy had the ball. How many touches did we have in their half? How many touches did we have in their box? Hardly any. Cavani came on. We had a, we had a header on target. Woo we had a header on target. But this idea here that people want to throw Radnik under the bus. Cool, man. You do what you need to do. I'm focused on the long term and the fact that have we had somebody else in, these stones may not have been turned over. These players may have gotten away with it. We would have gone into the season with so many more of these players still in this squad, still thinking, you know what? They can be Manchester United players. The more this season goes on, I'm trying to take a positive from this. They're just exposing themselves as the frauds that they are. They really are at this point. It's the absolute utter minimum, man. They can't do. Second... Every second ball, Brighton are first to it. The energy, the intensity, the utter basics of football. Football for dummies, if you open it and read the first page, it's going to be like four or five things you've got to do to be a decent footballer. None of these United players do it. None of them. And it made it so easy for Brighton today. So, so easy. There's not really any positives you can take from any... Delo and Tellez, again, abysmal. Uh, Lindelof and Varane, geez. I'm thankful Danny, Danny Welbeck couldn't chip, although he chipped later and then fucking... Jesus, Danny Watford didn't score this. That's, right. that's, a, that's a positive from the game, if you want to take that. McTominay and Matic, wow, abysmal. Fred, when he came on, ghosted. Elanga, absolutely dominated by Cucurella in that game. Ronaldo couldn't do a bean, and Bruno Fernandes was kind of being typical Bruno Fernandes and speeding the game up when he probably should have slowed it down. But we can't play with possession. We hardly had possession at all in that first half. Brighton were just toying with us and then destroying us. Like some Derry Lee dunkers. Oh, my word. My, as I said, I, I, I don't know how this team keeps managing to find new lows. After what we watched against Brentford, we were like, oh, maybe, you know what? That was a decent performance. Very good from a team. Decent goals. 3-0. Happy days. Let's take that into the games against Brighton and Crystal Palace. And let's finish, finish the season with some sort of semblance of professionalism. But instead... It's all gone out the window in one of the worst results you'll ever see from Manchester United in the Premier League. Look, I know it's humiliating and I know it's utterly humiliating to lose 9-0 to Liverpool on aggregate, but this is the best Liverpool team I've ever seen in the Premier League. We've just lost 4-0 to 4 nil to Brighton, a team who scored like, had scored like 16 goals all season in the Premier League and they ripped us apart. It wasn't even close. And genuinely, 4-0 is flattering to that Manchester United team. And as I've said multiple times in this match reaction, you can call out Ralph Rannick if you want. Because as a manager, in the short term, he's been very poor. Absolutely abysmal, probably you'd argue. You, you could definitely argue, but results-wise, these players, as I said, the same players that started that game against Brentford, you're telling me that's down on Ragnick between those two games? It's all up there with these players, or it's not up there. That's the problem. It's somewhere else. It's on holiday. It's already chilling out, feet up. They've been doing that all season long. Had there been any sort of application today, any sort of attitude from these players, you think that, that would have happened? There's no fucking chance that would have happened. These United players, as I said, they're somehow somehow finding new ways to make you despise them even more. Even after the humiliations of Liverpool home and away in City and Watford, they're still finding new lows and new ways for you to go. You, it's just... Ten Hag's got an incredibly huge job, and I genuinely have to thank Ragnick for, for just coming in and putting the spotlight on everybody. Have we... Just had a, like a someone else had come in and at the end of the season might have been, oh, we just got we scraped into top four. The real changes may not have come. They have to come now. This has to be the end of it. The, what we're seeing now is the utter pits of this Manchester United team. That We have to turn a new page when Ten Hag comes in. Because I swear to God, if this continues anymore. But these players, man, get out of the club seriously.